this movie. It was so adorable. I loved it. Um, I want to ask my, my first question before we get it, start get diving in. Where did you find this case or who, who started this? Who started this whole everything? It was all my uh, idea. <laughs> it was? No, it really wasn't. It was all Simon's idea. <laughs> I mean, it, it was all Charlie Chaplin's idea, I think, really. <laughs> oh, to get to get his body stolen? Okay. Uh <laughs> well, that's the real genius move, isn't it? No, yes. it was a real, it's a true story. Uh, so, well, sort of a true story. Um, so it really happened that two brothers tried to steal the body in the 1970s. Uh, so, yeah, it was... Uh, and then we just updated it to modern day Las Vegas in uh, 2020, through 2021 through Doug, who wrote the script. But 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 <laughs> I think right, it, 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 the story was something that Simon had been aware of for a while, but uh, I hadn't actually heard of before. So when Simon came to us and said, "Hey, look, I've got an idea for a story that I'd like to do uh, our own spin on." Uh, he brought it to us and I had to sort of, I had to double check to make sure he wasn't actually, um, you know, trying to pull our leg, our collective legs uh, and see that it wasn't a wind up. And, and it was actually true. And, and when you look into it, you find it's a, amazingly, this is actually, uh, you know, the basis of what we do in Stephen Chapman is, uh, is, is in the actual reality. These two inept, bumbling brothers, um, this pair of sort of scheming, slightly, Low, uh, low down on the criminal fraternity uh, totem pole, um, a pair of con men. Uh, actually, as Simon said, in the seventies, stole and for several weeks had in their house the the, the coffin containing the body of Charlie Chaplin. Um, and they and they thought they could get away with it, and they thought they could ransom it. Um, and so when you hear that, you think, well, that just lends itself very well, a to a story, but b, I think, very well to a to a comedy, to a sort of like a slightly sort of crazy caper kind of thing. Um, so we decided to do a modern version and we thought, where would, where would the modern version, the sort of, where on earth sort of sums up schemes and scams and where do people want to get rich quick? Um, and the natural, uh, the natural place for us there was Las Vegas. So we, um, so we decided to set it there and we, just, uh, we decided to do the modern version rather than do a sort of slightly uh, period setting. Um, but uh, we decided, yeah, well, let's do a, let's do our own take on this story, but let's make it a comedy because it just seems to lend itself so well to it. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect for a comedy. Um, and the narrator, who who's narrating? Well, it's uh, well, in, 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 oh. yeah. Go on, Simon. Sorry. No, we're not allowed to say right. Surely, it spoils the whole movie. We can't. We can't be telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the the, the 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 narrator is so the narrator is uh, the identity of the narrator is confirmed right at the end, but. Uh, Hopefully, when people watch it and they find out who the narrator is, they'll realize that um, it was very appropriate for that particular character to be narrating the film all along. Okay, okay, and then <laughs> that that leads to the my question about the dialogue. The dialogue throughout is sort of there's there's a lot of detail, but it's also very at times very silly, <laughs> and and. and <laughs> sometimes absurd but funny all, all all along what what was the kind of the motivation for um the, the, for you directing the dialogue and for uh, the writers for writing it i mean where where did that come from the, it, your dialogue was was really great well i mean i for the for the bulk of this answer i'll, pa I'll pass over to the writer himself which is doug uh, but for me i think like that I, th I think you're right it, there's some great there's some wonderful dialogue in there and it's a lot of it is born out of the chemistry between the brothers, um, which is uh, which is a natural extension of the chemistry between Doug and Simon themselves. So you know we know all, all of us as um, as people who work in film, you know we know each other quite well. But Doug and Simon have known each other for a long time. They've got a great history together, uh, good chemistry with each other. And so I think Doug very very you know skillfully captured that in his script. Um, what, uh, what do you think, Doug? Um, well, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was born out of real life. I mean, Simon and I spend most of our lives pretending to dislike each other, whereas really the emotion is much stronger than that. Um, so it wasn't hard to do. I mean, basically, we're both Brits, so I just wrote a whole load of British humour. All I had to do was make sure 
I encapsulated the story of digging up Charlie Chaplin. But I mean, me and Simon spend our lives arguing about cold beans and other such absurdities quite often. It's, it wasn't a big stretch. Doug, you're being, you're being modest, Doug. <laughs> you know, well, uh, but it's true. I mean, I, I've, I've worked uh, alongside Doug and Simon, and they do talk to each other that way. Um, but, you know, as Paul mentioned, you know, honing it and, and putting it so that it was very appropriate uh, in the script uh, about Chaplin uh, was, was well done. You know, bravo. Thank you. I, I, actually, we, uh, we had to turn it down, I think, the hatred, didn't we, Doug? They were like, no, nah, two people couldn't hate each other this much. But that's what I meant. The emotion was much stronger than we, we portrayed. I mean, look at us now being friends. <laughs> In, t in terms of directing that, it's, uh, it, it does make the job a lot easier if you've got, if you've got a, a good script that you believe in and, and talented actors in front of the camera who, uh, who have a natural chemistry together, then, you know, 95% of the job as a director uh, is, is already done for you. And then it's all about supporting them and, and trying to give them the best environment in which to, uh, in which to flourish as actors. And uh, I'm very pleased with, you know, not just with Doug and Simon, the whole cast of Skin and Chaplin is a very good ensemble piece, I think. Um, but obviously, the brothers are sort of front and center, and it's their um, it's their relationship and their chemistry that I think is the sort of driving impetus um, for the film, uh, and one that we're very proud of. How much ad limit uh, ad libbing or you know going off script was done? Oh, um, there, I mean, there was a bit. Yeah, there was right. Um, the the thing with um uh with 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 this one was um like. The, the script itself was already strong. So you, we could do a few takes and get, get what was on the script. But then if we have time, we sort of have a bit of a play around, um, you know, and do a few variations of things. If uh, the actors have an idea of something or if I've got an idea, then we can sort of play around. So there was a few, there was a few instances that actually um, that ends up in the final cut where we added things, you know, sort of while we were there on the day. Sometimes things work and sometimes don't. You don't, you don't include them in the edit. But I think even things like... Um, the, the the big the big the big ending scene with the sort of you know the Mexican standoff in the desert. There's elements of that that whilst it, it you know scripted you know brilliantly, like we added several things like the brothers. Um, um, I don't want to give away too much of the ending, but the brothers' uh, dialogue and a lot of their reactions with each other there, we added on the day just because it felt very natural for them to be doing something like that. Um, so there's you know there's always room for that for that kind of thing if you've got time. But I think in order to have a strong comedy, you need to have a strong script to be, in order for you to then deviate from it if you want to. But what you can't do, um, unless you're Christopher Guest making Spinal Tap mockumentaries or something and you've got all the time in the world, what you can't do is just turn up with no script and go, right, we'll just make something funny. Because that, you know, then you're sort of conscious of, you know, time and, you know, the, the ticking clock and that kind of thing. So there was, there was some impro, wasn't there? I think like Simon and Doug, you, you were both, you know, like uh, very sort of keen to sort of, Add elements of your own sort of individual personalities to uh, to, to certain scenes, weren't you? Well, yeah, especially um, one of those was in the cemetery where we were searching for the grave. We yeah. we we ad libbed a bit in in there. Um, we didn't use it all, but but we did ad lib a bit. I, uh, I I thought it was a shame we couldn't use the poor man's gravestone that said, "I told you I was sick." I, <laughs> that was pretty funny on the day. <laughs> We but, did actually uh, find that, didn't we? We found it. I told you yeah. I was sick. Gravestone, like a real gravestone. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> I heard that as a joke before, like you know, like years ago. I heard like uh, I right. think it was a Spike Lee or something. You know, somebody I wanted. I told you I was sick on their gravestone. Spike and Milligan. Then we actually, yeah. Spike Milligan. Sorry, and then we stumbled upon it. Yeah, sort of. Mm. Uh, that was yeah. amazing. So, so is there going to be like a blooper reel or, or like uh, when this comes out on like for... Oh, that's, that, uh, that's there, the there, there weren't any bloopers. Everything was perfect first time. <laughs> <laughs> We're professionals. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> there were, there, um, in terms of actual sort of bloopers, there wasn't that many. Uh, I mean, the, in terms of scenes that we cut, there was quite a few. The original cut for the movie was sort of came in at about two hours 15 two hours 20 so we did cut down quite a lot but mm -hmm. you know as a as a filmmaker it's um 
I'd always rather be in a position where I'm, I'm, I'm cutting stuff out. So I'm, so I'm left with just the best stuff uh, rather than trying to make up a sort of runtime later. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, we did cut down quite a bit, but uh, no, no, um, it was a very professional cast. So that, you know, there wasn't too many bloopers. Um, thankfully, because okay. the whole, the whole thing was shot very quickly. Did so something funny. Yeah. yeah, they thought it was on purpose. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, and I can just imagine. I mean, how it, it, the chemistry between the two, the two of you, um, Simon and Doug. Um, how did you ha, have you just built that over the years of just working together, or you just guys just like kind of clicked when you met, or? Well, he's my it's born out of. It's born. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! How did he get there first? It's born out of years and years of sexual tension. And I've, re- <laughs> I've, I've just, you know, there's only so many, so often you can just, you know, turn Doug away. But, you know, well, he you came know, up with that. The other thing is, is that they work together a lot, not as actors. Uh, they work together a lot doing tech work. Uh, Simon, you know, trying to figure out what happened to the, drone that he lost and Doug trying to build something uh, very quickly that should should have been, you know, he should have gotten a week to build it and he had one day. And so there was a lot of natural talking between them. Uh, if they were just actors, there'd be very little time for them to have probably built up what you're asking about it. But because they they were actually working on, uh, on the set, uh, there was a lot of time for them to do that. I, th- I think si- I think Simon and Doug have very good chemistry together because they work they work together a lot. They know each other very well, so they're very convincing and believable as brothers. Because when you're you know it's that thing of with family, like you love them, but also you love to hate them. So they're the people that you sort of butt heads with most. But actually, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's it's come it comes from a place of love, you know. Um, so they do come across very convincing as uh, as brothers because they are that sort of you know that there's a sort of slightly Odd couple uh, esque quality about them. They're sort of bickering, uh, a, a pair of a pair of bickering fools. Where you know you're never quite sure which one is the uh, is the more foolish. And I've still not worked that out in real life, to be honest. Right. Well, it, it is very difficult to figure out which one of us is more foolish, considering how straight based and sensible we always are. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that, shall we? So we're, we're all we're all just figuring it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I did have to look up to see, you know, whether you guys really were brothers or related or cousins or something. Because I, I'm like, they have to be some kind of, there's some kinship or something. And when I found out there wasn't any, it was, it's a great, it's great. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> so this, is this your first caper? All of you, I mean, for Paul and, and you know, for as, you know, in creating it and, and directing and acting, all of you, is this your first caper? And how do you feel about doing more? I mean, it's not the first thing that we've worked on together, but it's the first time we've done this, this type of, um, this, this sort of genre, this style of movie. And, and I mean, we loved it. It was a great, it was, it was fun to make. Um, but he, but also it's something that at the end of it, when you look at the end product, you go, oh, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. that. That came out kind of, you know, how we thought, how we intended it to. Um, and it's something that has had good responses. Um, and so, you know, and we were very lucky to get a, a limited theatrical release in the UK and the US. Um, and it's out now and it's available on DVD in the US and on uh, various stream platforms. And it comes out later on in the year. Uh, in the UK, but it was, um, yeah, like, it's something that we definitely um, enjoyed doing to the point that we think, right, well, we want to do something like this again in the future. So we already have a, uh, a follow-up plan to it, one that doesn't necessarily have to be a sequel in that people won't have to have seen the first one, but we do have a continuation of, uh, of the story planned uh, for the future with, uh, with the brothers. Yeah, most, you know, most, I don't know if you guys would agree, but you know, most filmmakers, as a rule, are very hesitant to try comedy because comedy can go, <laughs> it can go very bad very quickly. And you end up with a bunch of footage that is very difficult to put anything good together with. And, uh, you know, 
it was only after I saw Doug's uh, initial script and, and and read the way it flowed that I, I said, yeah, I think I think we need to make this. And uh, I'm really glad that it turned out as, as good as it did. Yeah, it, it's amazing. It's an amazing job. It, like I said, it's really funny and really smart. I really loved it. Um, and and I, I actually, I, I mean, I, I still kind of want to see some of the, the deleted the, the scenes that you didn't add in. I know, I know you said you chose the best ones, but I mean, I'm still thinking back to that gravestone and and yeah. what the conversation around that one at least. Um, so, um, what were some of your favorite parts? All of you. What were some of your favorite scenes? Oh man, I mean, that's like asking if that's like asking to choose your favorite child. Uh, Simon, who's your favorite child? Paul's my favorite child. <laughs> no, wait. Sorry. Doug's my um, favorite dad. Oh, hold on. I've got this all wrong. Wait a second. The scene in what? the strip club I really like uh, between myself, Doug, and uh, AC um, was one nice scene where it just, everything kind of came together, really, where she's sort of throwing dollar bills at us to... Uh, strip because she thinks we're wearing a wire that sort of just was as funny as I hoped it was it, in fact it was more funny we got so it, it was one of those scenes on one of those days where we got more excited every time we did it because we'd have another idea to do something kind of silly uh, in it and it kind of I think it just it came out well I, th I think my favorite scenes were probably the scenes where the the boys discover the grave and then later on they come back uh, at night to dig him up because those are those are some examples of uh, you know when they find it and then when they come back later. It's just the two of them, but there's a lot of great interplay between the, the brothers. There's some great dialogue in there. But what made that those scenes particularly special was the fact that when we when we came to shoot those scenes, up up until two days before we were filming them, we had a cemetery booked in Las Vegas. Um, we had one planned and we were due to shoot there, and then two days before filming. The cemetery said, oh, look, actually, we don't want you to film there. You know, uh, we're a bit worried about um, people thinking that there's a body being dug up. And we tried to say, well, no, look, this is a film. It's a work of fiction. We're not actually digging up a body. And they said, no, no, we're not really comfortable with it. So we said, OK, all right, OK. And, in, and meanwhile, we're sort of panicking, thinking, oh, God, I don't know how we're going to, you know, we need a cemetery. You know, we need something, you know, we need a place that we're shooting, filming this scene in two days. And we're already mid-shoot. And that day we were filming in um, Champagne's uh, bar in, uh, in Vegas with Wayne Newton, um, lo lovely Wayne Newton, who very generously came and, and did a couple of scenes with us. And he asked us how, how are things going, uh, and, you know, how, how's, it, how's the shoot going? And we said, well, it's, you know, the shoot's going well, but uh, we've just lost this location for two days uh, from now that we're supposed to be filming in. Um, and he said, and we told him it's a cemetery. And he said, well, look, why don't you film that scene in my backyard? And we sort of laughed and said, look, I think we need something a bit bigger than a backyard, Wayne. Thank you very much. And he, and he sort of smiled and said, look, why don't you come and see my backyard? And if you think it won't work, then you don't have to use it, but it, the offer is there. And so that evening after we finished shooting, we went to Wayne Newton's place in Vegas. And he, his backyard is a 27-acre green palatial uh, horse farm with, uh, with like a stream running through it and loads of trees. And, uh, and he said, will this do? And we said, yes, this will definitely do, Wayne. Thank you very much. And so two days later, we went back and we drifted in some fake graves and, you know, fake gravestones. And he very generously let us dig a very, very deep hole in the middle of his perfectly manicured lawn. And we okay. filmed there all through the night. And we had dozens of extras in because we had the scenes where people come in and they're sort of like holding a candlelit vigil there. And, and him and his family could not have been great more gracious hosts uh, his, his daughter lauren came and did a role for us um as the sort of surly uh, gum chewing waitress uh, in the diner scenes his wife cat came and did uh, a scene for us as the news reporter who uh, reports from the graveside and it just turned into a whole newton family affair so those scenes there i think were probably my favorite ones to do just because wayne newton managed to rescue you know he he, he gave us a victory from the jaws of defeat there um so I always look at those scenes with a particular level of fondness. And also the fact that we dug the hole in, in Wayne's yard and then, uh, and then ran away before, uh, you know, he realized what we'd done to his lawn. So I'm hoping by now it might have, it might have receded itself. But uh, uh, yeah, we might, we might have to send someone back at some point to lay a bit of a uh, lawn there. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> um, and the rest of you, the favorite, favorite scene. That's a great story. 
I what? quite like the scene when um, Cheryl and her sidekick show up to uh, steal the coffin, and I hit them with the saucepan. Yeah, I like it, and I like the lead into that when Doug's home alone with the coffin, and he decides he's going to pry it open and get the uh, Charlie Chaplin's honorary Oscar. Uh, the way it was staged and, and the way the score, the music, uh, I think was just fantastic. It really is my favorite scene in the, in the whole movie. Thank you, Kenneth. Also, I, I had a lot of fun when we did work at Wayne Newton's house and Simon and I spent the afternoon putting out all those lovely gravestones and then all the sprinklers went off and people <laughs> were all over her diving on top of the gravestones trying to stop them away, <laughs> and shouting at the, land, the landscape guy to turn off the spree, sprinklers, but he doesn't speak English and he's just going, care? <laughs> <laughs> I think we... Wayne Newton was just very lucky we didn't hit his sprinkler system on, on digging the hole. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing that he lets you use his, his lawn. I mean, his, his, his estate. That, that, that is amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he probably regrets that now, but yeah, at the time it was amazing. <laughs> it, was, it was nice for him, though, because me, Ken and Paul had a meeting with him. And he said, despite the fact we work with Simon, he'd still let us use his lawn. And I thought that was very exactly. Wait, yeah, that what, was very big. What, what meeting? <laughs> huh? He looked past that. What? Yeah. Has, has Simon never heard about this? Yeah. That's it. But well, it, we, it, uh, it, it was it was so, it was so generous of him to let us use his place um, and to do our film as well. You know, the guys are, the guys the international star and. Um, he came and very generously did uh, our little movie and was great in it. You know, like uh, he had that, has the, had that scene and um, and was fantastic. It was a pleasure to work with him. There's a, you know, he's he's known as the nicest guy in showbiz, and there's a reason he has that reputation. He really is a nice guy. Yeah. And 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 having him in the movie just kind of cements that. Okay, if there's any question, anybody has any question, this is an an authentic Vegas story. Well, here's Wayne Newton. So you know, yeah, exactly, exactly. The whole the whole thing was shot entirely on location in Vegas, um, and we thought nothing is you know you, you 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 can show casinos and you can show the desert and you can show the strip and those kind of things and they're great and they're all good to shoot in. They're very cinematic, but if you're shooting in Vegas, you kind of if you want that Vegas seal of approval, you have to get Mr. Las Vegas himself, and he came and did it, and we were just very touched and honored that he did. We 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 used Wayne Newton's name more than he ever the nose probably any anybody <laughs> we talked to to get anything we're like yeah the movie's got wayne newton in it. and they're like oh come in you know like no problem he, he has no idea how much we used his name we're like rinsing out a credit card there <laughs> hey if you got it spend it um <laughs> um so what's next for for this crew uh, what what do you have next for us to keep us laughing well, as I alluded to earlier, we're actually continuing uh, the, the same universe that this, uh, that Stealing Chaplin uh, is set in, in that um, we're currently in pre-production for the follow-up, which uh, if, if I tell you the title, it should give, you, it should give away the, uh, the general gist of it. The title for the next one is Stealing Elvis. Cal and Terry still, uh, steal Elvis. Well, we don't want to give, we don't want to give away the, the script too much, but let's say they, they try to, and maybe they find that... Uh, that, uh, that uh, how, much, how much can we give away here, guys? Uh, story well, wise. Don't, don't tell them about when he meets Bin Laden. Okay, that that's. <laughs> so uh, the idea, uh, but the idea for the next one is that they plan to do a similar thing, and uh, and they visit Graceland to, uh, to to try and hatch a similar scheme. When they get there, they find actually that the um, it's empty and that Elvis isn't dead, but he faked his death, and then. And from there, things start to spiral out of control for the brothers, and uh, that's probably the that's probably the uh, that's probably about the extent of the logline that I'm allowed to tell people at the moment. I, I get the good-looking girl in this one. Ah, Doug hasn't seen the real. No, we got to be 2021, yeah. Doug. It's now a good-looking boy you're getting. <laughs> Alive or dead? <laughs> <laughs> alive, Ken. Alive. Oh. Me or her? <laughs> um, 
But also, uh, in addition to which is Paul has a daughter. Production. Um, we'll have uh, um, Paul, sound, Paul sounds good to me. Best he's ever. Is he having a stroke? I think, I think his, his, his internet Some, is getting weird. <laughs> somebody send a doctor. Yeah, it's kind of, I'm glad. You know, that's why we celebrate July 4th. You know, we we got away from the uh, UK um, internet service. Yeah, but at least he's got free <laughs> health care. Ken, at least he's got free health care while he's having his stroke. <laughs> well, that's true. You guys, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I, 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 I'm looking at my time here. I'm gonna have to cut chop this before Andy gets me. Um, thank you so much for giving me your time and for talking about this film. Um, I, I know people are gonna love it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I already. I, I, every time I talk about it, even now, there's people who've seen it. Critic friends who've seen it, and you know, they've got some great things to say. So, right, thank thanks. you so much. <laughs> Thank and you thank much. you very much.